Hi, in this next section, we're going to talk about compound interest. Now, compound interest is a little more a step into like how we do financing now in these, these days. So compound interest is still one time deposit, one deposit. So that's not going to change just yet. Because it's still not really how you save. If you're like a regular saver, you put money in every week, right? So, or every week, every every time, you know, maybe every week, but like every month or whatever, every paycheck. Um, so you're continuously making deposits while earning interest at the same time. So recall in the last section, we had one deposit, one time interest. Then we had one deposit over time. Now we have one deposit and interest on interest. So now that idea of now letting an account sit and earning interest that first year, and then that's the new amount that's going to sit in the account and earn interest off that amount the next year. So this is why we call it compounding, because we're giving you interest in your account and using that amount as the new amount to earn more interest. So then notice that the more longer you let your money sit, Right, you're earning interest the first year like the off this amount, and then the second year this much. You're earning interest this much because they, they already spit some interest into your account, and then this after the second year you've earned interest off this bigger amount. So now you're getting a little more interest than the year before, and then the third year you're going to get interest off the bigger amount on top. You know, so then it's more interest. So it's interest off interest, but only one deposit. So. Um, this is the formula. The only difference here is that you do have to divide by the rate by the compounding period. So most banks compound every month, like you see in your statement, it spits out a few a cent <laughs> or something, um, or a few dollars, depending on how much you have. Um, and that rate that they tell you they're giving you is actually, they call it an effective interest rate, meaning for that month. And so the annual interest rate is when they divide that by 12. And then they take it to the overtime um, and the compounding periods power. So um, we're not going to do any algebra and everything's done in the calculator. And it's really just about identifying the scenario which formula to use and then applying that. Because remember, these are skills we want to take with you throughout your life, not really the algebra we want you to take with you. We want you to think about the thought process. Okay. So here are some compounding, a common compounding um, time frame. So here annually means once a year, so your K would be one. But if it's quarterly, there's four quarters in a year, so your K would be four. Monthly would be 12 months in a year, so that means your compounding period would be 12. And then daily, 365. If you did weekly, it'd be 52. Okay, so the, I put a little note in here. Just remember that when you deposit money into the account only once, and then you let the interest accrue. And we're going to learn in the in following sections about de more many deposits and many interest. <laughs> so let's go back to money, Uncle Moneybags. We like him. Uncle Moneybag gives star nephew starving actor two thousand dollars to deposit into a savings account, earning three percent interest compounding monthly. How much will nephew starving actor have in the account in twenty years? So right now the question, the red flag is. Well, is it a deposit or a loan or withdrawal, right? So we know it's a deposit because it says it there. And we know it's one deposit, which implies compounding interest. So let's go ahead and write that formula down. You don't have to memorize them at all. You're going to have a whole list of them. So we'll have P sub N. equals the principal times 1 plus the rate over the compounding period times n to the nk. So notice the n here on the subscript of the p here is the power there. So it's just the time. So let's just see what we have here. So we have n is equal to 20 years. The principal, meaning the original deposit, was $2,000. The rate that in which we deposited was 
or 0 0.03. And then the interest is going to be, the compounding period is monthly. So if we go up here, monthly is went 12 times a year because there's 12 months in a year. Okay, so I draw this little appendix line, my little margin, and now I come over here and I start writing out oops, the, um, the formula. So I just rewrite it over here and then I can go ahead and fill it in. So I, my P sub N 20 is equal to the principal, which is $2,000 times 1 plus the rate, 0 0.03 over K, which is 12, all to the 20 times K, which is 12. So once again, I don't expect you to do any algebra as I promised. So we're going to put this all in the calculator for the way it looks. So we have 2000 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12 and then exponent, and then now this is going to be the little bit of the addition we're going to do to the calculator. We're going to put parentheses around the exponent, and because your calculator only knows order of operations, so it will, it will do that exponent first of 20, and then multiply the whole answer by 12. And so we really don't want to do that. We actually just want to multiply this first, 20 times 12, and then make it that exponent. So we put parentheses around the exponent. So here we have um, over 20 years, um, starving nephew starving actor is going to have 3641. Now we want to round, it's an, ever, we live in America, we have dollars, so we're going to round to the nearest cent. And you may not think that it matters, but oh, it, every cent matters, especially when you're saving money and you want every penny that you get, right? So let's round correctly. We don't want 50 cents. We want, you see this nine, we're going to make it 51 cents. Okay, so after 20 years, Nephew starving actor has in the account three thousand four three thousand six hundred forty one and fifty one cents. Now I just want to stop for a moment and talk about the calculator. Most times students have sometimes get the incorrect answer or they they're like I don't know what I'm doing wrong and most of the time it's the calculator issue not actually the formula because students aren't putting parentheses around the exponent or not not putting it exactly in the calculator the way they see it on their paper. This calculator here is just going to be fine for this class. It does everything it needs to and it's inexpensive. It's a TI-30XS small um, Texas instrument calculator. So, but the only thing is the exponent's going to have to have a parenthesis. So there are other calculators that you might have like a graphing calculator and sometimes the graphing calculator um, can um, prompt the exponent for you. So let me just show you quickly the graphing calculator that I have here. So I have, this is the, just the TI-84, you know, I'm sure you've seen it before, or heard of it. And if I just put this in here, 2000 parentheses, and notice it looks exactly the same, right? 0 0.03 divided by 12. So we're just going to do the same thing. But notice when I put the exponent button, it actually prompts it already. So it'll be 20 times 12. And I don't have to put parentheses around it because it's already superscript and it's already prompting that as an exponent. So if it prompts for an exponent and like that, where it brought it up and you don't have to worry about it. But if you're going to have a calculator where it doesn't prompt you like we had up here, then go ahead and put parentheses. But I'm just kind of emphasizing this because this is just common errors that happen and they're so simple and so easy to fix by a simple like parentheses. And students can get real frustrated, but don't ever get frustrated over the technology part because that's why your instructor is here and that's why I'm here because I'm here to demonstrate and help. So, okay. All right, so the next question, now we can go on to the next question. How much 
interest will starving actor earn? So remember that the interest is always going to be that original amount, you know, and the amount and the ending amount. So we the interest is going to be the ending amount minus the original amount, meaning the principal. So I write that generally because every problem is different. So the ending amount here is the amount after 20 years minus the original amount, the principal piece of zero. So we have 3,641.51 minus the principal, which is 2,000. So just taking that away, I'm left with 1,641.51. So um, nephew starving actor earned $1,641.51 in interest over the 20 years. So it doesn't seem like a lot for 20 years, like only 1600 interest, right? I mean, that's a long time. Think about 20 years from now. <laughs> so this is why it kind of, it wasn't really sophisticated enough. Like, um, you know, consumers wanted to be able to make a lot more deposits, a lot more, many more times and earn interest off all those deposits and off interest. So again, this, this formula is for one time deposit and earning interest off that interest. But what if like you make a deposit and earn interest, but then you make another deposit to earn interest and another. So not only are you getting money off the interest, you're also getting money off the more, the de next deposit. So now everything's being accumulated. So it becomes a lot more um, involved, right? Okay, so what if we didn't want to see what was happening in 20 years? Let's say I had a child like Professor Smart who wanted $20,000 for their son's college fund, right? And um, they, the baby was just born, it's newborn, so it has no, it hasn't lived a year. And so um, they know that their son is going to be a scholar and go to college at the age 16. And they need $20,000 to pay for all that college. So suppose Professor Smart wants to save $20,000 in 16 years and puts it in an account with 5% annual interest. How much should Professor Smart deposit today? So the red flag here is that notice that, they're not, that Professor Smart wants to put in one amount today, just one deposit today. And then so this is going to prompt you for compounding interest. So um, now, uh, this means that if we use the formula, right, P sub N equals um, P sub zero, one plus R over K to the NK. This means if we want to find out how much deposit today, we're actually looking for the P sub zero. And we know the P sub N, the P sub N, we know we want $20,000 16 years from now. So let's go ahead and make our appendix. So the N would be 16 years from now. The P sub N, so P sub 16, we want $20,000 in that account. The P sub zero, we have no idea. That's what we're looking for. But we do know the rate of 5% annual interest. And we do know that it's being compounded um, every year. Um, and notice it doesn't say compounding every year, but I do know that if there is none, we just assume that it's always the, let me highlight green, if it's annual interest here, then it'll be annual here if it doesn't tell us any different. We just assume. So I'll draw me a little margin. There we go. And now let's go ahead and put in the um, parameters. So P sub 16 was 20,000 equal to P sub 0 times 1 plus the rate 0 0.05 over 1 to the N times 1. So N was 16 and then once a year. So let me just simplify this a little bit. So we have 20,000 equals P sub 0 and then we have 1 plus 0 0.05 over 1. So anything over 1 is just itself. 
so this is just going to be one um, point zero five to the sixteen times one, which is sixteen. I'm not going to use the calculator. I'm not going to touch it because then I can divide each side by one point zero five to the sixteenth power. Now you're wondering, oh my God, what is she doing? Well, I'm what I'm doing is not a lot of work. <laughs> so again, these all reduce out on the right side and I'm left with P sub zero equal to 20,000 over 1.05 to the 16th power. So let's see how much Professor Smart has to deposit today. So let's go to our calculator and I'll put in 20,000 divided by 1.05 zero five to the sixteenth power. So I get nine thousand one hundred sixty two and twenty three cents. So Professor Smart Okay, Professor Smart will have to deposit 9,162 dollars and 23 cents today in order to have 20,000 dollars in 16 years. So we can always find any one of the parameters as long as we have all the other ones. So as long as only one is missing, then we can always find it no matter if it's N, K, R, or the principal or the ending amount. Um, so the real, the real, you know, the real current issue is, well, I'm not going to just take $9,000 out of my savings and put it in somewhere. I'm, what if I don't? What if I don't have nine thousand dollars? Obviously, Professor Smart has to save the money, so maybe he doesn't have that kind of money in his account now, right? So something is more reasonable as putting money away every month, right? Like hundred and fifty dollars every month to this account that will give me twenty thousand dollars in sixteen years, and that's going to be a little more reasonable, right? We usually make monthly payments or monthly deposits. We don't usually say, "Oh, I have all this money. Let me chunk it in somewhere." So. Um, in the following section, we're going to discuss having m many deposits with many, many interests. So.